Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And today's guest is always, always just puts a smile on my face. He was on the Best Passive Income Isle podcast. He is, I don't know. I mean, I don't want to be, I don't want to be too hyperbolic, Scott Todd, but should we just call him a real estate genius? Yeah. I mean, you know, of, of all of the, uh, of all of the people out there that are talking about real estate, our guest today is like not only a talker, but he actually does it. Would you, would you like, we call him like the Gary V of real estate. Would that be yeah, a fair? Good. And, and in fact, I, I brought this up, but I can literally, I mean, he's so reliable and consistent. I can set my watch by his emails that come out there. Well, and that's why I'm so excited to talk to him because, you know, we're going to be able to extract so many of the success secrets from our guests. But before we do, I'd be remiss if I didn't properly introduce my co-host, Scott Todd, Six Sigma Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com. And most importantly, if you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Speaking of automation, today's podcast is sponsored by geekpay.io, the only automated financial CRM. Your borrowers are going to love you. It's a set and forget it system. Don't be like me. Don't spend your Sundays trying to figure out amortization and dealing with your borrowers and your customers. Just do a set and forget it, geekpay.io. All right, Scott, let's, let's introduce our guest. It's Mike... Hambright from flipnerd.com. This guy has probably forgotten more about real estate than we'll ever even know. Mike Hambright, how are you? I'm, I'm great. I'm great. And I want to come back every day for the ego boost that I get from these introductions. Is that, is that cool? Yeah, absolutely. But yeah. Mike, you've, you know, you've earned it. You've earned it. If you guys haven't been to Flipnerd, Mike, can you kind of give us like the elevator pitch of what Flipnerd is? Yeah, you know, it's evolved over time. I mean, I, as I've been a real estate investor for uh, a little over nine years. And um, I guess about three and a half years ago, we started Flip Nerd, which was just a podcast for the first year and a half. Uh, and then we launched a membership site. So I've always wanted to give back. I mean, I think real estate investing in and of itself is kind of a lonely business unless you, you know, a lot of us don't, there, there's meetup groups and there's local RIAs and things like that. But after you get a little more experience, those are not, uh, not, I'm a supporter of RIA club, so I'm not trying to knock them, but it just gets to a point to where you're kind of elevated above some of the newer people and you want to be challenged and challenge your thoughts and learn new things. So, um, so I started a podcast where I interview experts in real estate investing and Mark, you've been on our shows. We have a, actually a couple of different podcasts. So I appreciate you um, spending time with us, but it kind of helped feed my uh, need to meet other people and learn ticks, trips and tick, trips, tips, tips and tricks. Okay, I try to say that three times fast. It's, it's early. Mike, Mike has not had enough coffee. <laughs> yeah. But uh, honestly, yesterday I recorded show number 359 with a guy that we talked about skip tracing. And it just blew my mind that trash I've been throwing away from my returned mail, for example, is actually treasure. And I just haven't, I've literally just been throwing it away for years. Um, and so I still learn new things with every person that I talk to. And in the process of me talking and learning and meeting people and building my relationships, I kind of get to share that person's expertise with the world. And so it's been kind of my way to give back. But, you know, I think we have around 1250 episodes across our uh, three different podcasts that we've had that are all real estate based. And we, you know, we try to do a lot by giving back uh, to others. And, and now we're moving more and more into the kind of training and, and coaching space and which I've been doing actually for a long time, just not through flip nerd. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, at, at the end of the day, it's a great, uh, it's a social platform where we're coming up on a hundred thousand subscribers and uh, we pump out a lot of good content that we think is high value. And uh, we're going to just keep doing it. No, it's so funny because, you know, Scott and I talk about this a lot and, and um, you know, it's great doing deals. It's, 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 it's phenomenal. But after all you've done, let's say you've been doing it for like, you know, five, 10 years, it does get lonely and there's nothing more gratifying than helping somebody else yeah. do deals. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Mike, can you kind of give us an example of, of one of those, uh, you know, investors that you kind of helped take to the next level and, and how you did it. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, up until recently when I was uh, coaching uh, inside of a different program, um, my team was doing almost a thousand houses a year. And truthfully, about uh, uh, a number of those people started with zero experience. They came out of corporate America like me, and uh, they just appreciated having a system and processes to follow. And so I think, um, you know, I, we, we help a lot of people. I, I always appreciate people that have come out of the business world because they, you know, a lot of times real estate investors, newer people don't really understand the importance of marketing and lead generation and investing in your business. And I think it's because, you know, the, the HGTV shows of the world flip this house and all that, they, they never talk about how you got the deal. They just assume, well, the deal just fell in your lap and the rest is history. But it's like, Hey, the hardest part was finding the deal. Right. And, um, so, you know, when I work with people that have some uh, business background, or they've run a business before, they've owned a business before even, it's so much easier for them to be successful because they understand you've got to invest in advertising lead generation, you have to have systems and processes, all the stuff that's not sexy, but necessary to run a business. And so, but yeah, I, I really, uh, I really love uh, helping people get started because, you know, real estate investing has changed my life. And I like to, I like to see that in other people, like you said, I love doing deals and I don't mean to, to sound uh, cliche or anything, but you're right. Sometimes you, it got to a point where we would get a big payday from a deal and it's just, it's awesome. Don't get me wrong. Who doesn't like to make money? Right. But it just didn't have the same feeling that it did at the beginning. And it was like, okay, well, here's another one. There's another one. And don't get me wrong. I, I like all that stuff. I'm, I'm, I love to make money through real estate and I always will, but there's always something missing after it got to a point to where it's like, how can I, if I'm laying in bed at night thinking about what I did, like, did I impact anybody other than myself really, you know? And so, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel the same way, but I, I think real estate and the transactional nature of it, right. Um, after a while, like it, it does start to lose its luster, the big right. payday. Like I'm looking at a payoff quote on my desk right now from somebody paying off their note. And like, I, like I was talking to my wife, I'm like, well, this is nice. Right. Like, but it doesn't really, it doesn't get, have the same um, thrill that it did in like year one or year two or right. even year three. And now the bigger thrill is when, you know, Scott Todd boxes me. He's like, Mark, I got, I just, you know, I just tied up these deals and it's amazing, right? Like that for me is way more gratifying now than, you know, just that big payday because it's, you know, we're like the pebble in the pond. Like it, it ripples out and we are having an effect and it's, you know, to wake up every day with this purpose of helping other people, you know, move the needle in their life. There's what else is there? Right. Yeah. Scott Todd, what are your thoughts? I, I don't, and I, you know, I think that the other thing that that does is it really just shows that you guys are very comfortable with um, kind of the, the abundance mentality as opposed to a scarcity mentality, because there's, there's no way that you can, you can go out every day and try to, try to help someone change their, their life. If you're concerned about, is there enough for me? Right. And I think that, you know, that, that positive influence of, you know, getting beyond that, okay, there's, uh, I'm okay. Now let me try to go help somebody else. It kind of helps you to grow. And it, that I'm telling you, like the, the best thing that ever happened to me was, was when I realized like, man, there's enough for all of us. Uh, and I don't have to like guard, guard everything. Uh, we can all survive on the same planet. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Mike, did you struggle with abundance mentality when you first started? Your, was, your, was your wife like, Mike, you start teaching everybody how to flip houses like you. And next thing you know, you and I aren't going to have any, any more houses to flip. Yeah. So no, my wife never said that, but I, I would say that I felt that way and I'm not, it's not, you know, not necessarily that way, but I definitely felt like everybody was my competition early on. Maybe the first year or two. And I just, I didn't really, it's not like I thought, sat around thinking about how to not do it, but I didn't put a lot of thought into it. I'm like, why would I, you know, didn't, why would I do that? Right. And then you start to get to a point to where you're like, well, there's a way to do things. And I'm not saying that you should always do things with an ulterior motive, but in this business, there's a way to do things where everybody wins. And so there are some things that I do to kind of maybe feed my heart to like help people. And, and we do a lot of, there's a lot of things that, uh, we do, um, uh, in my family. But uh, from a real estate standpoint, there's lots of really legitimate ways to help people in a way that, that I get some benefit from financially too. Right. Um, so it's not, 
you know, I'm not to say that everything we do is financially motivated, but, but truthfully, I think at the end of the day, a lot of the sustainable, sustainable stuff in business has to benefit everybody financially. Otherwise, it'll just get to a point to where you say, I just can't justify the opportunity cost of me doing this anymore because I've got to pay employees and I've got to pay for my advertising. I've got to do other things. So there's lots of ways to kind of create win-win scenarios, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So Mike, if, um, if I had to have you like in front of like a witch's kettle, right. And you're like, you're like (laughs) stirring it up and you're like making it like this magical real estate investing elixir. Right. And you've talked to so many experts and from all walks of real estate investing, if you were going to make this magical elixir with the best real estate investing characteristics, what would they be and how would you mix it? Oh my goodness. I have no idea how to answer that. Uh, I don't know. I think the best, I think the best, uh, I don't even know where to start here, man. You put me on the spot. Well, I mean, you how, how, well, I, know, I know salesmanship is going to be yeah. one of them. Oh, for right? sure. You're saying what, makes a, good, and processes. what makes a good real estate investor, what yeah. makes a good investing business. Yeah, there's no doubt about it that uh, there are some key criteria that a lot of people, uh, they get started that fail early on, just don't, don't have in their mix, which is systems and processes for sure. A lot of people are just winging it. They're using legal pads and, and I started that way. When I started, even, you know, nine years ago, there really weren't a lot of systems. You know, you could create something on your own or people would create some fancy stuff in Excel or you would use some uh, basic like contact CRM, like high rise or, you know, some of these like uh, rudimentary ones that have kind of grown up, but there were the, like the Podios of the world, the Freedom Softs, so all these like CRMs that are built for us. They're just, they just didn't exist. You know, everything was much more physical. We're passing around manila folders instead of scanning stuff or using pho- apps on our phone. But for sure, systems and systems and processes are critical in this business. Uh, and if you don't have those things, then you have a job for sure. You don't have a business. You can't really communicate well with your team or be a efficient for sure. But systems and processes, I think the single best skill that anybody can have, not just in real estate investing, but in life, you know, other than being a good person, you know, don't get me wrong, is salesmanship, right? The ability to make things happen. Um, and, uh, and, and patience, right? This is a business that you just, you have to be patient on. I mean, what other business is there? There's probably other businesses, but what other business is there where you can strike out 95% of the time? and still have a killer business, you know? So you gotta have patience and kind of fortitude to hear no all the time and still be able to push through because it could bring you down if you can't. Um, so grit is huge. Yeah, yeah, you have, to, you, have to, you have to fight through those no's because it can get you down, right? I mean, um, and, and in real estate investing, the problem is, is I, as I, I've always kind of said, it's, it's a lumpy business, right? You, you're flat for a long period of time and then you get a, then you get a bump, but those bumps are big enough to sustain you for extended periods of time, weeks or months, maybe, right. Depending on your expense structure. So you have to be able to just kind of ride the roller coaster and the ups and downs uh, through markets and throughout the year. Um, So, you know, kind of patience and, and like you said, grit to be able to make that happen. And lastly, I would say uh, I really do believe that uh, the ability to kind of give back and add, add value through whatever your thing is. Like for you and me, it's, it's our shows, right? What we're doing here. Um, and for me initially, it was by having people come to a house that I was rehabbing. I did these things called rehab live where people would come watch me rehab a house uh, live. They would come to the house like three times, right? When we bought it halfway through the rehab and at the end, and we would talk about it. And that was kind of my post podcast, you know, our pre podcast before the pod, before, I don't know if it was before, it was before my podcast world uh, had existed, but um, that's kind of how I started to do it in my market. And then we just started to expand and do some more stuff online. And then it ended up in a podcast, but that kind of gave me the fulfillment of uh, kind of giving back and connecting with other people. Yeah. Scott Todd's like, that's awesome. Scott's like, we, we got to do something physical in the land investing business. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Mark, uh, I'm, th- I'm trying to think like, okay, here's the land before I buy it. Here's the land. Like, after I bought it and here's the land after I sell it, it's all going to look the same. I could probably just do it. <laughs> well, just a picture from, from Google earth. It's kind of like going to be the same, but I, I do think that there's value 
And I, I mean, I've been, I've been like really thinking about this because I do think that there's value in like face to face learning. You know, the fact that Mark, we, we see it even with flight school, you know, the fact that people are showing up to an event. Uh, I mean, you see it with boot camps where they show up to an event, they, you know, they leave there more motivated. And I do like Mike's, Mike's thought process behind the three of them, because when they can see like, okay, this thing really happened, you know, and this is a real deal. Well, then it just kind of becomes true. And then, then they, then the last piece is they have to sell themselves that they are in fact worthy because I think that's a a big struggle for a lot of people is, oh, well, you know, it's, you know, I I guess there's something special or maybe it's not going to work for me. And Mark, I know when I started out, you know, like when, during those early days where I was mailing and mailing and mailing and not getting any accepted offers back, you know, I, I kept wondering like, okay, well, is it just me? And is it just not going to work for me? And I just kept telling myself on every single podcast I listened to, no offense, but if that guy can do it, I know for a fact I can do it. And not, not you, another person, but you know, I, I would listen. I'm like, I know I can do it. Cause I know that I can outwork that guy right there. Yeah. You know, in um, I wonder how often you get that Mike Hambright where, you know, do the like the the flipping Vegas people who watch the the infomercial at two in the morning, do they do they shy away from you because you're the flip nerd and your systems and processes? We're building a business and it's not you know it's not Mike Hambright, you know, in front of his Ferrari and his you know seventy thousand square foot home selling selling real estate. I'm going to teach you how to get rich on Flip Nerd. Yeah, no, I don't do that's not my style for sure, uh, but. Um, no, I think, uh, I think that one, that's one challenge that a lot of real estate investors or want to be real estate investors have is they've watched shows on TV that are surreal. They just, they're not the real world, right? Um, not that those things don't end up happening, but I, I've never, I've rehabbed hundreds of houses. I've never gotten mad and started throwing sledgehammers through a window. In fact, I've never actually touched a sledgehammer before on my projects for sure. So you know, uh, it's, it's just reality TV, but it's, you know, not reality. Right. And I think, um, I think the challenge is, is there's a lot of, a lot of gurus, a lot of information out there that are selling stuff that sounds interesting and it's like everything, right? We all, you know, as Americans, we want to pop a pill and lose 50 pounds and, you know, get a spray tan so I don't have to lay out in the sun or whatever. You know, we want things like instantly. And that's just not how this business works. That's not how any business works. I mean, you might have people that strike it rich and got lucky, but that is exactly what it is, is luck. So this is a great business. Uh, Whether you're in land or single family houses or multifamily, anything you're in, these are all great businesses to generate wealth and, uh, and build up cash flow. But their businesses, they, they, you gotta, you gotta, you got to put the work in. You've got to put the work in, right? Yeah, absolutely. Mike, have you ever had shiny object syndrome where you have a guest every on? day, every day, do, every, every day? Oh every yeah. Day. I'm, I'm that guy. Yeah. Well, how, how do you avoid it? I mean, how do you stay focused? It's tough. It's tough. Uh, part of it is uh, my wife, like, you know, she'll pull the reins whenever she has to for sure. Uh, and, but part of it is, um, you know, I would say, you know, I'll, I'll truthfully admit that I, I lose focus a lot. I think uh, that's probably some of what's happened through Flip Nerd is there's lots of ways we can go. I enjoy the shows. I enjoy doing all those things. And I haven't always been focused on the business side of it because at the end of the day, I have employees, I have staff. There's a lot of things I have to do. And so, um, you know, for a lot of reasons, I have to get more focused than I have in the past to, uh, to kind of monetize that because um, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, there's nothing wrong with that, right? And so I think sometimes we get hung up on, you're just training people will, and, and you know, it's tough when you have tens of thousands of people watching a show or getting your emails or whatever. There's always one person that responds and it's like, this is fraud. It's like, wait, I just gave you like a free 30 page guide that I like spent six months writing. <laughs> like, how's that fraud? But people just say things and it gets under your skin. But at the end of the day, you have to treat it like a business. It's not going to be for everybody, but hopefully add enough value to the right people and it makes it all worth it. Yeah, I, uh, I got a great book for you to read called Hug Your Haters. So I actually have a, a system when I get those emails like, you're a fraud. If this is so great, why are you creating your own competition? You're teaching people. You're the one. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're the only one who's making money at this. And um, there's, a, there's a way to, to handle those. 
Yeah, for sure. But you know, it's, it's interesting. Like it used to kind of bother me in the beginning and now I love it. I'm like, Oh, you're opening my email. Awesome. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like I, I see, I see the silver lining in it and then I'm like, Oh wait, now do I unsubscribe to this person here or yeah. just keep, keep seeing You know, it? what's tough uh, is you, when you have a lot of people that are following you and, and I, I'm, we're all guilty of this, right? You never go out and you know, it's rare that we, that you get, positive accolades like hey you're doing such a great job i love this stuff you get them but for some for some reason one hater will stand out to you amongst a hundred people that love what you're doing right and it's just that you know you just want to please everybody and uh, you just you can't do that yeah scott todd what, what's your your hate uh filter <laughs> uh no i take it very like i i too am like you know i take it very um it, it bothers me right because at I, I'm trying to do good in the world, right? Like I'm trying to add value. I'm trying to, uh, even with my customers, I'm not trying to pillage them. I'm trying to add value in their lives. And then when you have one guy or one person that, you know, wants to call you a scam or, you know, it's like, what, what are you, what are you even basing this on? What are you even talking about? Because, you know, it's, it's unfounded, you know, and, and it really does get under your skin. Or Mark, you know, like when that, when you have that one person sitting at a boot camp, and and the look that they're giving you is just like, I don't like you. <laughs> what did I do to you? Smile at me, right? Like I can't. Yeah, it, it it really bugs you. Yeah, even when you buy houses, even on the investing side, not just the more people that are listening probably relate to the uh, to the actual investing side. You know, you get those people that you go out and make an offer on their house or maybe offer on their land, and they're like, you're just you're trying to steal this from me, and like you were never going to buy it from that person. And then you, and then we have people that will go buy a house. I would say, you know, it's a small minority as we talked about of people that we actually do deals with, and those people that we do deals with could have very easily said, well, you're just trying to steal my house. But literally, you can just see the weight fall off their shoulders, the tear in their eye. You just made their life so much easier. And they get it. For them, it was never about the, the money or the house. It was about the burden that that house was causing them. And if you can help make that go away, then we, we do a good thing. So like I said, you get told no a lot. And then you get those comments every once in a while that, uh, that are easy to weigh you down. But uh, I'd say, you know, people that are listening that are investing, just don't let that stuff prevent you from moving forward because the people that you do help and the deals that you, that you're able to make to help your family and your business are worth dredging through that crap effectively. Yeah. You know, I had, every, it, yeah. Go ahead, Scott. I was gonna say, I had a lady once that was the same way. I mean, I felt like she was just beating me up over the price of, of her land, you know, like just beating me up, beating me up, beating me up. And like nothing I could do was like, I just didn't feel like I was making her happy. Not that I feel like I have to make a, a seller happy, but I just felt like there was this tension there and she didn't like me and, and everything. We completed the transaction and she, she literally called me up and she said, this was one of my like, I don't know, first, first 10 tr transactions. And she said, hey, I just want to thank you uh, for, for, um, for doing this and, and doing what you said you were going to do. Because of this payment that I got, I'm going to be able to pay for my medicines for the next six months. And literally, I was like floored because I'm like, man, this lady was not negotiating out of, you know, to be mean or she was negotiating to get the maximum dollars that she could get. Right. Because her mission was she had to pay for her medicine. Yeah. And right then I was like, man, it was kind of like an eye opener for me because then you realize like, okay, really the core here is not like, what do you want for the land? It's what problem are you trying to solve? Sure. You know? yeah. And w once you start to get in that, that piece, then everything else opens up because it's not always about the money. It's about solving a problem to your point. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Well now Mike, we're at that point in the podcast, my favorite point where we get to put you on the spot uh -oh. and ask you for your tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go right now, improve their businesses, improve their lives. What have you got? Awesome. Well, I actually have two things if that's cool. Uh, my, my tip of the week, just general tip would be, um, and we, again, we talked about shiny object syndrome and some things here and I've got it. And uh, I, I've been thinking about this a lot lately. You have to look for ways to continuous, continuously simplify your life. 
it almost needs to be like a weekly or certainly a monthly exercise to say, what am I doing right now that I don't like doing? Or what did I accumulate that I don't need anymore? And I'm not talking about just stuff. I'm talking about for us, a lot of times it's things you do, right? Sometimes I'll make a decision to like get this software and then it's like, well, nobody on my team knows how to maintain it. So now it's me doing everything or just little things like that, that seem like they're seem on the face, like they're, it's just a little thing, but it drains your energy. Um, and so I am not, you know, this is one of those things that's, uh, I am, uh, have not perfected in any way, but I think a lot more about it now. Uh, I just how to continuously look at things and say, do I need this in my life or can I outsource this or can I just stop doing it or can I get rid of it if it's something physical? Uh, so I think um, that's, that's important things because um, I know a lot of the most successful real estate investors in the country, we, both, we all do here, right? And a lot of them um, on the face are doing well and everything's good, but behind the scenes, they just got a bunch of crap going on in their life that they've kind of gotten themselves into one way or another uh, that doesn't necessarily make them fulfill fulfilled from a lifestyle standpoint. Like we all preach, like, and I'll be honest, even myself, I talk a lot about financial freedom and time freedom, but sometimes after I talk about those things, I'm like, well, do I have all the freedoms that I'm talking about? And sometimes when I don't, it's stuff that I've done to myself to cause those situations. So anyway, that'd be, that'd be my first tip is just to continuously look for ways to simplify your life. Um, Cause a lot of these things aren't going to matter at the end of the day, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I struggle with that, especially on my, on my, what I call my terminal days where I, I take Mondays and Fridays off and um, you know, I always pretend like, okay, this is my last day of my life. What am I going to do? <laughs> yeah. And, um, and then, you know, there's like that point in the day where I'm like, I get a little stressed out. I'm like, and I'm like, Oh, I should be doing X. Right. Like I'll get like anxious and then yeah. I'm like, wait, this is the last day of my life. Why, why am I worried about that? Right. Like I'm going to die and then I won't have that worry. So honey, let's have another glass of wine, right? <laughs> yeah. or, 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 you know, or whatever it is. Or like, kids, let's go swim for another half hour. Or, you know, those things that really, truly, you know, make, uh, you know, an impact in my life. Yeah. If this is the last day of my life. But it's, it's hard. It's, it's, a, it's a struggle. Scott, I, I know you struggle with it when you're on the boat doing nothing. <laughs> just just Can, for, forcing yourself to relax. Yeah. It's like if, you're, if you have that, that type of A personality and, um, and if you're surrounded by type A personalities, like we are, right? And yeah. we're talking to these people, it's like, oh, wait a second. Maybe I should start doing multifamily. Like, you know? Yeah, exactly. I would say that it's actually probably worse for people that have achieved some level of success because now it's not about the money. Like you, you have money to cover your costs. You're not worried about survival anymore, right? And you just start to think about, well, what can I do next? Like, and, and some, I believe sometimes I probably, cre I probably create a problem because then I need to solve it. You know, it's like, uh, so uh, anyway, uh, I'm learning, I'm learning. And I hope all everybody listening does too. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're all in that same, that same boat. I mean, you know, look, if you're listening to this podcast, that means that you are most likely in that category where like, you're not worried about survival anymore. Right. Like, Maybe you might be worried about, I don't know, your kid's college education, like all of us, but mm. you know, your, your, your basic worries are, are probably over. Um, Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week? So Mark, uh, this week I actually had a call from a guy that um, asked me if we would take an alternative form of payment and like, I'm, I'm always open for stuff. And so, you know, he actually asked me if I would be willing to take Potcoin, Potcoin.com. You know, it's the P O T or P O D is in data. No, P O T, like pot, like pot that you smoke. You know, Potcoin. So okay. it's a cryptocurrency, like a Bitcoin, okay. but it's basically for the pot industry. And uh, this guy obviously is in the pot industry or wants to be. I don't know. Uh, I can. I can only assume that you would know what, what state the, of land this property was located in. Yeah, I know it for sure. So, you know, my, my tip is not necessarily that we all race out and like jump on the next Bitcoin, but um, you know, I think that, I think that it's important to recognize that there is alternative forms of payment. And if you, just like you want to be everywhere, just like you want to be everywhere in your marketing, I would encourage you to like look at alternative methods of payment 
for your customers because you don't know uh, who's going to want to like, you know, pay with pot coin. So and, you need to know how to do it. And GeekPay can use this because there is a pot chain API yes. and a pot coin API. See? See? Oh, we can automate it. I love it. I love it. All right. Cool tip. Wow. Awesome. Never, never thought about that. Um, and my tip of the week is, you know, start learning more and uh, it really moved the needle in your life uh, on lots of different levels with flipnerd.com. Um, I, I, did, I have to say it's the most comprehensive website for learning real estate out there. Um, it really is phenomenal. And it's all experts. It's not like, you know, like I would say, you know, Bigger Pockets is probably like the Wikipedia of, of learning real estate. This is like learning real estate from experts. Um, people that have actually are doing deals every single day. Um, you know, it's, it's great. Is that, is that a fair assessment, Mike? Yeah, no, I appreciate that. I, I think, um, you know, uh, for sure. One, one, one of the things that we have on the site is uh, we have probably the largest listing platform of, in, of wholesale deals. You can post multifamily and you can post uh, rental ready properties as well, but you can actually post your wholesale deals on Flipnerd, um, and uh, and if you are uh, what we call an elite an elite member, essentially if you're a kind of a premium member of Flipnerd, you can actually receive real time uh, new notifications of new properties via text or email. Um, so in Dallas, for example, if I go post a property right now, it'll get emailed and texted out to all of our premium members in Dallas real time. And so. Uh, so that's good. If you're if you're a member, if you're listing properties, you can get it in a, get a lot of eyeballs on it to help build your buyers list. Uh, and if you're looking for properties, you can get real time alerts for new deals uh, in your market to to check out. So, uh, so yeah, it's more than just the shows and the uh, we have some blogs and other things like that. But uh, yeah, one other thing I'd say on the training standpoint, if if you don't mind, uh, as one other kind of tip is to share. We actually just launched a five part training program that I call the millionaire blueprint. So it kind of teaches you how to be successful. A lot of things actually we talked about earlier, systems and processes and having the right people in place, but you could get that for free. It's a uh, flipnerd.com slash millionaire dash blueprint, flipnerd.com slash millionaire dash blueprint. So if you, if you opt into that, you'll get uh, immediate access to the five training videos that, uh, that I created myself. So you know, they're good. I, you know, they're good. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Mike, this is really phenomenal. And um, I want to thank you again for taking, you know, valuable time out of your day to, uh, to mentor our listeners. And, you know, I really appreciate it. It's always great seeing you again. Yeah. Well. Thanks for the opportunity to talk to your, talk to your peeps. Yeah, absolutely. Um, speaking of peeps, Land Geek community, just so you know, uh, the Land Geek app is actually working a lot better. Go to the app store on, uh, on uh, iTunes and uh, download the Land Geek app and get all the podcasts, um, you know, right there on your on your phone um, from all the all three podcasts: uh, Land Geek Podcast, Best Passive Income Model Podcast, which Mike was on as well, and the Art of Passive Income Model Podcast, as well as some other goodies. Um, I also want to remind everybody that uh, the only way we're going to get the quality guests like a Mike Hambright from FlipNerd.com is if you do us three little favors: you got to subscribe. You got to rate and you got to review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of your review to support at the link.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit. Um, also, don't forget to start automating postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek for your listings. And if you want to start automating collecting money, which is always fun, go to geekpay.io. Scott Todd, anything else? Did I forget, that Mark. I, pl I plugged a lot there. It's a lot to you plug. Did. You did. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, everybody. And uh, let freedom ring. ring. All right. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, guys.